The average size of warehouse has reduced by 60% in 2022 compared to 2000 due to advancement of warehouse automation systems in these 20 years. Post-pandemic and with the rise of online shopping every year, the average rent of the warehouse space has increased significantly. Thus, it is a necessity to design a layout that is efficient and at the same time cost-effective. If you are looking forward to design or upgrade your warehouse layout, then this video is for you. Hello everyone, myself Dr. Rupal Agarwal from Your Retail Coach. We are retail and e-commerce management consultants and today we are going to discuss 7 steps to design e-commerce warehouse layout. We have defined detailed must-do steps to ensure you do not miss out on any. Also, we have a takeaway tip at the end of each video which will help you in organizing and expanding your business. So stay tuned till the end. Step 1. Analyze the space required for your warehouse. It is important to calculate the space requirement based on the following factors. First, is packaging size of the products. Second, estimated order volumes. Third, the warehouse height. Fourth, the rack size and rack height. Fifth, your buying purchase stat. This would vary for local purchase and imports. Sixth, the number of racks required. And seventh, lastly, the space required for other operations like your inward, outward, utility area, scrap area, etc. We have a separate video on six steps to determine the size of your e-commerce warehouse in detail. The link is attached in the description below. Step two, design the macro layout. Macro layout consists of the following. Outer walls, inner walls, which cannot be demolished, entry and exit points of the warehouse, utility areas, which cannot be demolished like toilets, wash basin, etc. Thus, at this stage, we get the layout specifications, which cannot be changed due to certain limitations. Step three, define the zones. Next step is to define the various zones on the layout to understand the space availability for each activity within the warehouse. Example, orange zone for inward area, blue zone for good storage area. This can be further divided into more zones if there is a requirement for cold storage, ambient storage, yellow zone for utility areas, and green zone for outward area. Now let's go further. Step four, define the micro layout for each zone. Now start micro planning within each zone. For example, orange zone for inward area. From where the goods shall enter, where shall they be kept for staging during inward, average size of the consignment we can expect, equipment required for unloading and their size specifications, aisle space required while unloading and keeping the goods in inward staging area, space to keep the pallets which needs to be given back to the transporter. While you micro plan for each zone, there are chances the zone size might increase or decrease, which is absolutely fine. The above example is for an inward area. On similar lines, you need to study while micro planning each zone. Step 5. Safety and security measures. To ensure your warehouse design planning is safe and secure, consider the following parameters. First, the CCTV positioning. Ensure there are no blind spots. Second, the light positioning. Ensure even lighting in all areas. For example, if your lights are positioned above the racks, then this affects the efficiency. Ensure adequate light within the aisle spaces between the racks. Number three, temperature control requirements as per the product stored. For example, in case of cold storage, ensure you've planned an anteroom. This shall help to avoid loss of temperature while inward and outward of goods within the cold storage area. Number four, handling equipments required and their size shall help to determine the minimum aisle space required between two racks and while movement of the goods within the warehouse. Number five, not more than one or two entry or exit points within the layout and no open windows until you have a safety fixed net. Step six, storage of goods. To achieve faster TAT in deliveries, ensure you store the fast movers at eye level, heavy goods at the bottom of the racks, excess ordered goods or lightweight goods at the higher shelves of the racks. Thus, plan the height of the shelves within the racks accordingly. Step seven, check before you start building. Last but not the least, now you have your layout design. Ensure few points are verified before you start building your warehouse layout as per the layout design. No leakages on walls or ceilings. Adequate space available for transport vehicle to enter the warehouse for loading and loading. Ensure you do a pest control after civil changes are over and before you start planning for your racks. Now here are your steps to design an e-commerce layout. In case you need help to design your e-commerce layout, please feel free to contact us and our experts shall surely guide you. Tag for this video is define SOPs. Warehouse team cannot operate without well-defined SOPs. SOPs are to be defined during the layout planning to ensure SOPs are practical to implement and they do not just remain on paper. Integrating SOPs within the layout is key to optimize your e-commerce warehouse operations. 
आई होप यू एंजॉयड दिस वीडियो थैंक यू